I think because I married someone from here and I had lived here for um, 18, 20 years before I even started blogging about West Virginia, it became pretty easy to share positive stories. But um, I literally started with like sharing traditional things that I wanted my family to keep. That same idea of having that diary or that personal narrative. So my son was, is now 27, and one of the things he said is, that, well, if you're going to write a blog, I want to know about our family. So it was things, so I simply literally started with like a recipe or a family story or, you know, a tradition that our family um, shares. And that's how step by step I started. So it was literally just pulling grandma's recipe out of the recipe book and saying, this is how you make the cake or, um, you know, my husband's blacksmithing business. We shoot horses all over the state. So it was maybe a, a, a tender moment with a horse or maybe it was explaining something about his business or so it started with just specific things that we do as people every day and then I expanded expanded them into bigger stories then every occasionally things would pop in like um, you know an experience of when we lose a family member or um, you know taking a vacation somewhere in West Virginia and that's where I was like okay I can share not only my personal experiences but I can share stories about the culture and history and art through travel so yeah it just kind of is this idea of these are all the important things I think that happen here culturally whether it's a cake or it's riding the Cass Scenic Railroad or if it's about you know a great experience a family has um, and that and the reason it's I think it's, it, I still find that as a driver is because I still truly in my heart believe that people are missing out on the things that I love most. And I think that I should share them with you, with anyone. So it's easy for me. It's not always easy for everybody else, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can sit down and write a thousand words and, and have three blogs in an afternoon because my brain is constantly working on stories. So most of my artwork, especially now as a mature artist, um, really reflects um, what would be traditional in West Virginia. You know, I think as an art student and as a younger person, you explore all of the avenues that are open to you. At least I did. Maybe not everyone does, but, you know, I wanted to try all the different mediums. I wanted to explore all the different techniques. I wanted to see and read and visit all these different styles because there's so many and they're so interesting but the ir ironic part for me is that now that I've that people are paying me to create art and I, I'm now more involved in the community art the public art is that um, I personally am more drawn to culture and history than the modern art not that there's anything wrong with it I, I'm just not an urban artist it's not in my heart um, so what I end up doing is I end up taking historic themes and historic patterns and techniques and bring them forward into to modern and contemporary artwork. And I didn't intend to do that, but, but that's how I operate. It's, it wasn't planned that way. So I'm hoping that the people that come to me and ask me to do that kind of work understand already innately that I'm, I work in the preservation field I work in rehabilitation um, so my every single day that's what I do I work with historic buildings I work with antiques I that's that's my interest so hopefully that the people that ask me to paint are also interested in reflecting not only their past but their future their culture and who they are but also who we want to be I think maybe it's just take time, take more time. I, and, I, and of course my life's changed over the last, my son has grown up from three and I was 10, you know, and I have, a, I have a little more quiet time. But I think when I started, I think I was rushing and I didn't let ideas and feelings especially um, have 
the needed space to develop into a, a clear thought process. Um, lots of times I felt like I was like, oh, I've got to get this done, and I've got you know, 15 minutes, and I, you know, and then something else is going to have to happen. So I was kind of like trying to wedge my creative time into other schedules. And now, over the last you know five or six years, it's really changed at home, my environment at home, and I realize that I can't. I can't rush it. I mean, I can, but it doesn't turn out as well. Um, and sometimes I just really need time to think about those ideas and get them onto the paper. Sometimes it takes, you know, sometimes it takes weeks. I've gotten irritated about something and I tell people I have to chew on it. I have to mull it over and over and over and over for weeks before I can actually commit it to paper. And, and then when I do, I allow myself just to write. I don't do a lot of editing. I, I, I you know, um, I'm trying to think. My one of my my people that I've worked with, with AmeriCorps, I think she called it the gushing style of writing. <laughs> that um, you just kind of you have to put it all out there all at once. It just has to come all out. It's just going to pour out. And yeah, I might go back and change a word right away, or I might. Oh, that's not the word I wanted to use but it comes out in a big gush. And then it sits, if I have time. <laughs> it sits, for, and then I go back and say, okay, is that really what I wanted to say? Is that really what the idea I'm trying to get across? And then I go in and edit. Okay, I'll take a paragraph out, or change an introduction, or whatever. But when I gush is when the words come out in a way that is the most powerful. I think because the emotion's built up. And once I pour it out onto the page, um, the way the words interlock and the way they're created and the way that they become an idea is much more beautiful if I let it happen spontaneously than if I overanalyze it and I overwork it and I, you know, oh, too bad I forgot that comma. I gotta go back. It doesn't happen that way for me. Do you think that's connected with it being like an outlet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I, and I'm completely 100% normally emotion driven. I can't write, I'd never make a journalist. I can't write about a news story just because it's news, or I can't write about building a garage just because it's building a garage. I would never be able to be a technical writer, I'd never be able to be a writer that. Um, got paid by someone else to write for someone else it's not it's it's not within my personality at all um, so since I'm an emotion driven writer yeah those emotions have to build up and they need to pop out and when they do they pop out onto the page a lot of painters paint that way right they there's something inside them that has to be expressed through painting it's very spontaneous and it's very in the moment I happen to write that way and I get a lot of satisfaction from but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely about expressing something at that one moment in time. Um, and usually it's, it reflects back to um, something I care about deeply, which is you know family or events that happen here in, in West Virginia or, or um, you know if something I find fascinating, like the, the building that I work in, the Golden Rule, I find very fascinating. And so I can write about it without struggling. One of the blogs that I wrote, uh, one of the posts I wrote was about the Beverly Heritage Center. And I shared it with them, and they shared it on their Facebook page. And I was, and it, you don't know where that's going to go. So um, I talked to the director about two weeks later, and he goes, you realize that this is the highest seen item they've ever had on their Facebook page. And it's been shared over, it, at that time it was like 500,000 times in a week. What? I wrote, you know, 1,200 words and took like six pictures about a place that I love and people that I love, right? How is that even possible? So sometimes my blog gets seen, seen more by people than novelists ever get in their whole career. That to me is just bizarre. I don't, I don't understand it, how the matrix works. I just send it out there into the universe. 
but it is it is that ultimately that shared understanding that you know we got a bad rap and people don't understand and so the only way that you can change people's minds is by creating positive better stories about who we are I've, I've published a couple of um, stories in different uh, outside of the regions magazines and things like that but it's more um, goofy things like I wrote a, a blog about uh, a campground in West Virginia that the Forest Service picked up and it went all over the country because it was an interesting ghost story about a historical building and a campground in West Virginia and then the Forest Service loved it and when the Forest Service loved it then it went it went crazy I mean I and I have readers from all over the world again I don't quite get it I really don't. I just, I just like what I do, and I'm just glad people like it. And when they like it, they share it, and that's great.